In 2373, a combined Jem'Hadar and Cardassian fleet would attack Deep Space Nine in what would be the first official battle of the Dominion War. Weeks before the initial attack, the Dominion would send convoys of ships and troops to reinforce the Cardassian border. The strengthening of this foothold in the Alpha Quadrant would ultimately result in small skirmishes between Dominion and Alpha Quadrant powers. Dominion ships would slip across the Cardassian border and attack both Klingon and Federation ships, destroying them. The Dominion would also attempt to isolate the Federation by agreeing to non-aggression pacts with the Romulan Star Empire, Tholian Assembly, and even the Bajoran Republic. Knowing that they would not be able to win a war if the Dominion was able to continue reinforcing the Cardassian border, Starfleet would utilize the Defiant to place cloaked, self-replicating mines that would prevent any ships from coming into or going out of the Bajoran wormhole. The Dominion would consider this a major provocation would declare war upon the Federation. The Klingon Empire would affirm its loyalty to Starfleet and ally with the Federation while all other powers, including the Bajoran government, would either sign a non-aggression pact with the Dominion or remain neutral. The Dominion would launch a massive fleet against Deep Space Nine in an attempt to prevent Starfleet from activating the mines. As the Dominion fleet was on its way, the Federation and Klingon Empire would not reinforce Deep Space Nine, leaving only the Station, the USS Defiant, and the IKS Rotaran to defend the area. Before we get into the battle proper, it would only be appropriate to break down the type of ships that would be present. You can feel free to go to this timestamp to skip, but it would behoove you to see what was fielded by both sides. For the Federation, they would have... Deep Space Nine, originally Terok Nor, was a Cardassian station built by Bajoran slave labor. A standard crew of Deep Space Nine could be anywhere from 300 members to over 2,000. The maximum capacity of the station was 7,000 people. Originally used to ensure the suppression of the Bajoran people, Deep Space Nine would ultimately become one of the most historic sites and vital interests of both the Bajoran people and the United Federation of Planets. The station is located near the Bajoran wormhole, which connects the Alpha Quadrant with the Gamma Quadrant and was the site of multiple battles. After the station's refit, it would boast over 48 phasers on rotary mounts, 36 phaser emitters on stationary mounts, 3 phaser emitters on sliding mounts, and 48 torpedo launchers that have over 5,000 photon torpedoes. The Defiant-class starship, publicly classified as an escort vessel, though in reality was one of the first real warships of Starfleet, was developed in 2366. Due to design issues, the ship would initially be mothballed. The Dominion threat would have it again relaunched in 2371. The ship was designed for one purpose, to fight and to kill the Borg. The armaments of the ship allowed it to complement other ships such as the Acura class. This design would allow it to work in tandem with other ships in order to defeat the Borg cube and other Borg ships. The armaments of the ship included phaser cannon assemblies located in forward-facing locations. At least three phaser emitters, one placed on the forward and aft of the ship to give full range of attack, as well as one behind the bridge on the dorsal surface. The deflector arrays could also be refitted into a makeshift phaser emitter though they would only be able to use it once. Defiant-class ships also had a total of up to six torpedo launchers, four forward and two aft. The ship was used extensively both at the Battle of Sector 001 and throughout the Dominion War. The Defiant would become a staple of a post-Dominion War Federation, being used to engage a variety of foes. The Klingon Bird of Prey was a warship of the Klingon Empire that has been in service since the 23rd century in various iterations. The most basic type of this ship has anywhere from 6 to 12 crew and can hold up to 4 prisoners, whereas the cruiser type can hold up to 1,500 crew and troops. The ship has been used as a scout, raider, patrol ship, and cruiser. The different iterations of the ship include the Cavort class, Burrell class, and D12 class. All iterations have been observed with a maximum warp of 8, but the speed can be increased to 9.8 during a slingshot effect, when you literally slingshot around a sun. Most all iterations of the ship would have two ship-mounted disruptor cannons, one torpedo launcher, and the more advanced ships would sport four ship-mounted disruptor cannons and two torpedo launchers. The Dominion ships included... The Jem'Hadar battlecruiser was considered one of the larger battleships during the Dominion War. While we can't be sure when they went into service, we know they definitively were in active service during the 2370s. A battlecruiser was armed with directed energy weapons and torpedoes. The main weapon of the battlecruiser was a forward torpedo launcher that could launch multiple torpedoes at once. In 2373, a single battlecruiser was considered a significant threat to even Deep Space Nine, a Cardassian station. The Jem'Hadar fighter was a patrol ship that was the mainstay of the Dominion forces. Jem'Hadar attack ships were prominent for looking somewhat insect-like in design. The ships were both powerful and highly resilient, 
Many times it is observed when the ship would crash land on a planet and still stay intact. The ship was able to achieve warp 7 and was highly maneuverable versus most Starfleet contemporary ships. The Jem'Hadar fighter boasted a primary directed energy array located in the forward section of the ship itself. The vessel was seen using anything from disruptors to phased polaron beams. These weapons were initially able to easily breach the shields of the Federation. Another tactic that was widely used by the Jem'Hadar in these ships was to commit kamikaze runs against enemy belligerents. As Dominion ships arrived in the Bajoran sector, Major Kura Norris demanded that Starfleet relinquish command of the station to the Bajoran Republic and filed an official protest of its use in the battle. Captain Sisko would decline to relinquish the station to Major Kura and she would move to her duty station. The Defiant would not be able to assist in the defense of Deep Space Nine as it would be laying the mines at the wormhole. Goldicott would request Sisko to surrender and, of course, Captain Sisko would decline. When the ships arrived, the Gull would order five Jem'Hadar attack wings to destroy the Defiant while the rest of the fleet attacked Deep Space Nine. To Weyoun's surprise, the shields of Deep Space Nine would hold against the Dominion weapons. Dominion technology had generally been considered more powerful than what Starfleet could field. Ducat would not seem surprised, honestly, and advised Weyoun to never underestimate Federation engineers, nor Sisko. Jim Hadar fighters would continue attack runs on the Defiant as it attempted to lay the mines. Jadzia Dax, commander of the Defiant at the time, advised Chief O'Brien that she needed to initiate evasive maneuvers, but was quickly told that if she did, it could detonate the mines and kill them all. Luckily, the Defiant would be saved by General Martok, who was commanding the IKS Rotaran, which would engage the strike groups and provide cover for the Defiant-class vessel. Deep Space Nine's weapons unloaded on the Dominion fleet and attempted to stop any ship that made its way towards the Defiant. The Dominion fleet continued its attack on the station, causing some damage but ultimately not breaching the shields. Interestingly enough, watching this battle after having watched the first battle of Deep Space Nine not too long ago, I was struck at how fast Klingon ships were being destroyed versus the Dominion and Cardassian counterparts. Of course, this could be plot armor, but it's as likely that the Cardassian fleet had been upgraded to meet Dominion standards. Deep Space Nine shredded Klingon ships, whereas they were causing damage here true, but you don't see the destruction you saw before. Now, while we do see ships destroyed, the fleet seems to sustain the losses much better than the Klingon fleet did. Having not breached the shields yet, Goltikot ordered the ships to focus fire on Section 17 of the Outer Docking Ring. This would be a successful tactic as it disabled the main power for the shields. Auxiliary power would kick in, but there was no guarantee how long it would hold. It was at this time that the Defiant would be done and immediately activate the mines. Seeing the mines activated, Goldicott ordered the reserves for a final assault. At this point, Deep Space Nine would detect additional enemy ships entering into the Bajoran sector. Captain Sisko ordered all Starfleet hands to abandon ship, and Starfleet personnel would begin evacuation procedures. During the evacuation, Sisko spoke to everyone on the station, noting that the reason no reinforcements were at the station was due to them being used in a joint task force. A task force of Starfleet and the Klingon Empire striked deep into Dominion territory. They were able to destroy the Dominion shipyards on Tauros III. This would be a major blow to the Dominion's production abilities. The USS Defiant and IKS Rotaran cloaked and escaped the incoming Dominion forces. Major Kura would activate a failsafe on Deep Space Nine, causing electrical outlets to blow all over, destroying most vital systems of Deep Space Nine's command and control. The Battle of Deep Space Nine would be a strategic victory for the Dominion. We don't know how many ships were at the battle, but we do know that at least 50 Dominion ships were lost and Deep Space Nine was captured. This battle would be the beginning of a very long losing streak for the Federation. This Saturday, December the 9th, I'll be putting up the community poll early in the morning. Come back to the channel on Saturday and look out for it. One of the choices will be Operation Return. If you want to see the Federation take back the station, definitely be there to vote. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And guys, I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.